a reverberation. How's that? Better. Okay. That's, okay, I'm not sure this is all correct. So how have you been? I've been good. I mean, today's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> yes, to, say the, to say the least. Yeah, yes. our government might be, uh, well, anyway, our government's in upheaval. And I think it, that needed to happen, but it's just strange. Indeed. It's uh, bizarre and disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And then yeah, a, 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 the first the first woman that busted into the um, the chambers, she was shot and she died. I know. Yep. Yep. It's just uh, very strange. Very strange. It is. People right? just sort of, sort of just uh, caught up in this thing that they attached themselves to and just won't let it go. And, uh, it just, bundle of just anger and rage and you know. yeah well and you know I was watching I was watching some of it and um I'm thinking where's their leader you know there was nobody <laughs> you know there's nobody leading them I mean it's Trump yes that's right he's the one and, no and other he, one. <laughs> he just fans the flames you know he's like he's and I, I actually think I think he they're going to keep trying to do this even after Biden's oh, yeah. in office. I can't see him stopping it. There's too much at stake for him personally. I mean, it's all about Trump. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing more important than this one do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, sort of holding sort of millions, hundreds of millions of people to ransom because he can't get his way. It's just quite pathetic, really. Yeah. So, it's, um, where are you now? Where are you located? <laughs> I'm in Portland, Oregon. Oh, so you're still, okay, so I, I thought you were moving around a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I was. I kind of went back and forth. I went to Chicago and then I went back and forth to the Bay Area, oh, yes. trying to think if I wanted to be back in the Bay Area and realizing I really didn't, which is on a, you know, it's been a really rainy time here, so it's a little hard to say that I don't want to be there. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know what the relative weather is like in those parts, but uh, I've only ever been to San Francisco in, in the US. That's the only place I've ever been. So I don't really know it very well. But what I saw in, um, in, in um, San Francisco five years ago was, was pretty shocking. Um, well, 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 perhaps, you know, perhaps I'm overly sensitive, but it, it did seem rather uncared for. Um, yeah. Um, it, both in just the environment, the people, the, it just, it almost seems third world, you know, coming from Asia, which is sort of, you know, super modern and efficient and clean, and, and walking into San Francisco, uh, not only, but in Silicon Valley, um, yeah, it was a, a strange experience, and uh, I mean, just, just when I got off the plane, well, I was, you know, on a 25 hour flight from Jakarta to San Francisco. Wow. And, and when we we're just about to get off the plane, these police sort of arrived and just started screaming at us to get off the plane. I thought, oh, this is a police state. <laughs> and uh, people, why aren't people seeing this? You know, the, the attitude was not one of a public servant. Which what no. policemen are, are supposed to be? You no. know? You, yeah. It's just a complete. What's going on? What's what is the problem here? <laughs> you know, there was no problem on the plane. Absolutely no problem on the plane. That seemed to be their standard way of getting people off off the plane onto the aero bridge and into immigration. You and know, immigration. I think... what, hmm. oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, even in Im immigration, that, that you had the same sort of, you know, immigration officials, I mean, they're, they're, they're always assholes, of course, that, that, that's, that's what they do. Uh, but in, in the US, they just seem particularly obnoxious. And, and it seemed to be some sort of need to sort of feed themselves something. 
some yeah. sort of you know superiority or, or sort of power or that's what it, it seemed to be about power you know I have this power I am asserting this power I can do this and you can do nothing about it. <laughs> now, there, there, uh, I don't think there's any connection for uh, American citizens to understand that our police force and our fire department and our Congress and blah, 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 are our public servants. I think people don't mm. get that. They, mm. I don't think they connect that, oh, I'm paying for that. They're, they're employed by me. Yeah. Well, they are. <laughs> Have <don't> people <laughs> realized that? Of, of all people, I would have thought Americans should have, you know, uh, <laughs> figured that out. So, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, well, you know, trying to leave that aside, yeah. America, let's keep it, <laughs> keep it away for a moment. Um, what, how have you been feeling since the end of the course um, in, in terms of, you know, what, what we did during the course and what has sort of happened since then. And um, what is your feeling about it? Um, I think by the time it ended, I was ready for that. Um, I was signed on for the reunion and that didn't happen. But um, as I think, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. our little study group has continued on mm -hmm. Fridays and that's been wonderful because We've, we've worked at making it very personal. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so, uh, yeah. Who was in your group? Uh, Pete, well, the original members were Pete and Sven and I, Chrissy and Reinhardt, who he doesn't show up now. Um, uh -huh. And then Glenn has joined us and sometimes Julie. And okay. anybody, anybody else that wants to is welcome. But, yeah, of course, of um, course. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, I, I, I have a group um, uh, with Elfie, uh, Rupert, and, and Julie, although Julie doesn't turn up much. I think she doesn't like the way we talk. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, Sven's been on occasionally, um, which is good. But, but I guess. Uh, our direction perhaps has been a little bit different. Well, different, I don't know. I haven't heard of from, from too many people yet. Uh, but again, we record all of our meetings. Yeah, I um, heard that. So, so and, and we just post them. No, no, not many people watch them. And, and that actually doesn't matter. That's really not the purpose. But you what, what about you know, God, 23 videos up now. Uh, which, nice. which some, there's some pretty interesting material, in, you know, here and there. Uh, but you know, not that I expect anybody to, to want to watch it. That, that doesn't really matter. Uh, but I, I watch them myself. I sort of you know, go through them, watch them again. And, and it, I, just, I just pick up so much more on the second and third listening that, you know, because, you know, obviously I'm, when I'm in, in doing it, I'm you know, concentrating, thinking, and doing all, and, and, and in the process, missing lots of stuff. Um, and, and so re-watching it, I sort of, you know, well, I, I sort of get more out of it because I can sort of pick up more, I guess. I, I can, uh, I've got time to think. Uh, yeah. Whereas what, when you're in there, you sort of, you're, act, you're sort of active, you, you know, you're thinking, you know, how do I respond or do I respond or, uh, so you're not, you're not fully 100% listening, which, you know, because you're, you're a, yeah. a participant. So yeah, re-listening to them has been really valuable for me. Um, so yeah, it's been, but, but on the other hand, when, when, when I, I guess this is the question of you know, direction. I mean, I guess we've gone into a, a direction which is not purely personal. Um, and, and I think that's you know, perhaps one difference where it was, you know, perhaps uh, I, I can't speak for all groups, but other groups sort of, more deeply focused on on the internal and, and the personal, uh, we've probably expanded that a little bit more to sort of encompass things which are a little bit broader um, in terms of what we think of as, as dharma. So so yeah, the, there's these, and so you have this I guess dichotomy amongst 
people who feel that you know, this is a deeply personal thing, uh, which should perhaps be private. And perhaps our current approach, which is sort of open and and uh, and and you know public in some ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so. So, anyway, so, so what, what's been happening in your group? How, how would you sort of describe the group? Well, I mean, I have to say in the, I think, oh, because I ended up with a Zoom account, I ended up kind of organizing the meetings. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's okay with me. I, I like, I like that. I like having, I like having that job. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. And so, and, my version of it is initially when we started to meet, we were all kind of going off on a fairly heady intellectual theoretical approach. And I realized I had kind of had enough of that um, after finishing mm -hmm. Stephen's course. And I wanted to bring it more home to how do I actually live my life? Mm -hmm. um, and how do the others actually live their life? And what do we do with these ideas and principles and um, and so we've been able to kind of bring it more to that. And more recently, one of the topics over several meetings was about friendship and Sven had introduced the book, Thicker Than Blood. It's a, blood. a book by a Buddha. I think he's a British Buddhist, um, part of the Western Buddhist group. I don't know who that is. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, I'm, I'm just barely into it, but it's basically about friendships and how they, how they are, um, how they were like growing up and, and then how they are now and how, how we are as friends as adults. So we've, we've kind of been incorporating that into our meeting and then um, also starting oh, to I've talk been more about- Sorry, incorporating uh, things from this book. Yeah, ideas about friendship. Okay. Like what, what that means for all of us. And, um, and then we started to kind of talk more about it being a Sangha that's about community. Um, and yeah. still yeah. uh, kind of still with the focus of what does this mean for each of us personally? Like, and, and some, some meetings are simply about <laughs> the events of the day. <laughs> yeah. the, the gossip is fine. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, staying present, right? So, yeah, um, yeah because I think I, I, for me, um, when I first joined uh, Stephen's group, I loved the idea of the intellectual ideas and tossing around theories. But by the end of the two years, I realized really more of where I was at was personal connection. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to live those things, actually live them? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I pushed for that. And fortunately, other people in the group also wanted that. So <laughs> Good. yeah, yeah. In, in some ways, I can sort of see um, the same sort of evolution in, in in, in my group, um, I mean, we seem to be arriving at this thing about connection, about you know, which, which seems to be, you know, for me at the moment, you know, quite central to, to what Dharma is all about. Um, you know, not just defining Dharma in terms of our inner worlds, but in terms of how we connect, and that. Um, I guess we I think I guess the feeling that you know <clears throat> that generally um, I guess Buddhism is sort of um, not, Buddhism as it's being taught in the West um, perhaps overemphasizes inward looking you know that you know looking within the self which is obviously essential you know, awareness uh, self-awareness um, awareness of our reactivity and all that, that's all essential, but perhaps missing that next step of, of connection, the reason for the Dharma, which is you know, connection to, not just to, to people or groups, uh, but, but connection to the world. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I can sort of see that. 
Yeah, and I, I think it's also come out of, you know, it's the first time I know of, it's certainly in my lifetime, where everybody is being asked to do something similar, like stay home. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, we're all doing the same thing. Well, yeah. Right. yes. And so, it's actually, yeah. kind of, I find that kind of awesome. It's like, yeah. really, everybody around the whole world is being mm -hmm. asked to do the same thing. Mm. Um, whether or not everybody's doing it, so I, we certainly yeah, know here course. in America they aren't. But <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're in deep we're in deep trouble here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was reminded about you know the, the greatest generation and uh, the Second World War, and you know how you know how the um, our parents or our grandparents used to talk about the war, the war, and how. You know, how I guess it was that you know sort of solid unifying sort of thing uh, that people could sort of say you know I was there I contributed you know this sort of thing. so, so I, I guess that's that it's sort of a little bit the same with with uh, with lockdowns and the pandemic you know you've got this sort of co common thing yeah I, I I've th I've thought a similar thing when I was a kid I was always obsessed with Anne Frank and. That, that, that certainly came right back to me <clears throat> with this hmm. pandemic about, but really how fortunate we are. Look, we have Zoom, you know, yes, <laughs> we, we, we can actually talk to people, be home and talk to people. Um, mm -hmm. I can't, it's hard for me to imagine how they got through, how people got through being in hiding um, hmm. for as long as they had to do that. Yeah, yeah. Not my sort of lockdown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it feel it does feel very much like well between the pandemic and our government, it feels very warlike right now. Yeah. 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 I, I don't I don't know whether you've um, looked at our. our videos or, or whatever i'll forgive you if you haven't um, <laughs> they, are, they can be very long and boring in places um, but one, one of the things we've been discussing um, amongst well we started out with this concept of defining dharma you know, even though i think we all knew right from the beginning that it was a fool's errand uh, but but it was a, a, i guess a, a fool's errand that sort of produced quite a lot uh, in, yeah. in, in the effort, in the effort to try to define something, you know, lots of other things emerge to sort of make a more complete picture of what it is that we're talking about. Um, so, so I don't think we've ever, we haven't come, you know, to any sort of definitive definitions because, you know, but but but, but nonetheless, I mean, there there, there's, there was that, I guess. An, an effort to try and identify what the the elements of of of, of you know what what dharma might be, um, and and uh, and it sort of has has led to some interesting places. I mean, and and, and I think I, I was just sort of wondering what what other people are thinking in, in these terms. I mean, I mean, what 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 did you come to? <laughs> Well, I think you know, as I sort of mentioned before, uh, I mean, certainly in t in terms of uh, you know, dharma as being some something very, you know, personal, private. I, I think you know we've we'll sort of realised that that's probably uh, not you know, the emphasis is perhaps misplaced. And that there seems to be an overemphasis on on the internal, which is obviously essential. Uh, but but uh, the next step, which is you know connection, seems to be the the, the whole point of the Dharma. Well, tentatively, that's that's something that we're discussing. But, you know that the, the, the whole reason for having Dharma is to is to is to sort of. Uh, Make beneficial connections with the world, uh, and and so I, I think it's sort of moving it 
not not out of a personal space, but sort of you know, broadening it to sort of say, well, okay, if this is Dharma, why? Why do we do this? Uh, what is the point of it? Um, you know, is it some sort of uh, universalism, or is it just something that some people can do? Um, I, I guess you know, talking along. I mean, I mean, obviously the. Um, the videos will sort of go much deeper than what I've just tried to explain there. Uh, but yeah, I, I just sort of see it. Our efforts, I, I guess, have sort of seen a, a much a, a broadening of, of how we see Dharma and the role of people who we could, we could call Dharmics, people who sort of adhere to a, um, a, a Dharmic vision of themselves and and, and uh, you know I, I think that's probably one of the main things that's come out of our discussions is, is a, a broadening from the internal to the external mm -hmm. and, and connecting the internal to the external mm -hmm. but, but what I mean what 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 do you, what do you think in, in terms of just you yourself I mean I mean uh, what, you what know, would you say sorry well, well, some of my reaction is, is why is it, why is it such a struggle to define? Mm. Um, and I, because I'm not sure it's that difficult. <laughs> mm, indeed. I, that could I be said know. too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's it's like maybe, yeah, maybe it's quite simple. Maybe Dharma is simply mm. how you live your life this is off the top of my head, but how you live your yep. life and um, and learn from the things that happen in it. Mm. Mm. Like how do kind you of like what? How do you respond? Yeah, I mean, kind of like my life is my school. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's where learnings happen um, yeah. or not. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what, what, what would you say, if, you, if I was sort of to say, you know, what is your dharma? I mean, how, how would you say, you know, I mean, sort of leaving aside sort of, um, uh, you know, Buddhism and, and all, all that other stuff, and, and perhaps even also in your case, psychological terms, um, what would you say was your dharma? I mean, could, could you, is there some way you could express, you know, this is my dharma? Uh, yeah. Without sort of you know, employing you know ten dollar words and and uh, and Sanskrit, <laughs> um, uh, I, how, could you do that? May, maybe. I mean, I think in a my Dharma. How to say this? Maybe the biggest mm, biggest schooling for me in my life is dealing with depression mm. and dealing with um, what it means to be alone. Mm. And and what it means to have fun. <laughs> mm. I mm. I think I might say those things. I mean, when I think of Dharma, I sometimes think it's parallel to our personal process, the, the process that often can, well, that is expected to come out in therapy. Mm. Really? Something like that, yeah. Mm. Because I, I, I learned the, well, I don't know how much I learned, but um, I work a lot with, you know, not just my depression, but other people I know who have depression. Um, mm. There aren't easy answers there. In fact, there aren't hardly any good answers there at all. Mm. Um, in this day and age, which is pretty crazy. Um, mm. And so, because there aren't answers there, I, I actually think it becomes one of the biggest learning places. Hmm. So, so there's sort of, there's no rules, so you have to make them up yourself. Kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there 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 are um, ways to deal with it, like medication, meditation, um, yoga, uh, you know, exercise, eating. But when, when you start listing all those ways, you realize that 
one is there isn't one answer and the other is we mm -hmm. don't know a whole lot yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's one thing that i discovered well probably years ago was that there is no one answer to depression no. or, or to sort of you know I, I what the, what is, yeah the one answer I think there might be is um, our brain chemistry. And I'm not a neuroscientist, but I wish when I had studied clinical psych that that was a, that I had thought to study that. Yeah, yeah. Because I actually think that's where we have answers. Mm. Well, I, I can, I can, I, I certainly, you know, study biology and, and um, well, biochemistry and, 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 and things like that. That's an, an interest of mine. Um, but, you know, I can, I, I can certainly say that, you know, I think it's foundational for people to sort of have some you know, basic understanding of biology and, uh, and of uh, evolution in general. Um, so, you know, I, for, for my understanding of Dharma, you know, bringing in elements of, you know, human evolution or evolution in general is sort of an essential part of that. Uh, the, the fact that, you know, that there's continual movement, uh, there's continual change, uh, uh, th there's no sort of stasis, it is just always movement. Um, yeah. that, that, that sort of, I guess, the, and there's always adaptation uh, yeah. response, to, you know, response to, to external stimuli, uh, uh, you know, response to, to whatever. Uh, causes people to adapt or not adapt, uh, as the case may, may be. So that an understanding of evolution for me, for, for, for my particular view of Dharma, is, is you know, quite essential. It, it, seems to, it's, it seems to be foundational for me. Uh, and that sort of leads into other things about, you know, how do we deal with things like depression and, and it, with that sort of worldview. Um, um, yeah, some of my children also suffer suffer from depression, and uh, uh, you know, trying to advise them it's it's very difficult when 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 they're sort of given sort of uh, magic pills to sort of say you know this is the solution, and uh, one thing, the one thing is never the solution. <laughs> there there is not a a solution. That there might be a range of things that you can do to, you know, mitigate it. Certainly, I think plenty of things you can do, good things you can do. Uh, but sort of seek the one true answer to. It's like trying to seek the one true answer to life, or like trying to define dharma. Uh, <laughs> although I, I'm, I'm not convinced that defining dharma is all that hard, but other people think other, otherwise. Uh, I think that the thing is there that people don't want to define dharma because I, they, they might be afraid that it'll disappear if they, if they look too close. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, I, um, I don't know, I, I was thinking and now it's gone out of my head about um, dharma. It seems, it, to me, it seems like dharma is a very, it's something very personal, like what you were saying, I think, if I understood you correctly. Um, and, and we each have to figure out our own. It's kind of like psychoanalysis. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I definitely think that each one of us has, you know, has our own frameworks, our own histories, of course, our own you know, uh, knowledge experience. And that sort of brings us to a, you know, a point where we can sort of say, well, you know, this is what I understand of Dharma. This is my Dharma. This is what I, I, I've learned so far. And, uh, and so rather than sort of defining it as you know, the Dharma or even a Dharma, uh, I've sort of started thinking more in terms of my Dharma. Because yeah. I, can speak, I can speak more authoritatively on that than I can on somebody else's Dharma. Um, but you know, yeah. this, this Dharma has come from, you know, in lots, there seems to be lots of pathways to this. Like I, I would think that, well, I, 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 my pathway is, has been, I guess, in some ways, embedded in in, in science, in, in in particular in biology, um, and and that has been, I guess, my foundational framework uh, to which I've come to a conclusion that looks very much like um, 
So, and, and, and you see it uh, with all sorts of other people. I mean, I, I'm starting to see Dharma everywhere, you know, not just in obviously Buddhists, uh, but, uh, but, but, you know, in, in, in all cultures, there's, there's elements of Dharma which you know, are, are expressed, and you can sort of look at that and say, you know, that's Dharma. I, I recognize that. Like, it's not like can, you, can you be more specific? Like what? Well, okay, well, like, okay, um, well, reactivity. That, that's you know, that's the that's the big one. Well, well I'll uh, relate. I, I guess there's. I, I live in. Well, I'm actually not in Java at the moment. But I've lived in Java for twenty years or so, um, and uh, in, in the. Um, in central Java, there is a, um, you know, the, the, it's a very mystically based type of culture, even though it's ostensibly Islamic. Uh, there is sort of, you know, a whole lot of syncretism, sort of, you know, from, from Hinduism, from Buddhism, from, from animism and all sorts of things. And, and amongst that, that mix, you, 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 well, I sometimes met people who, who had this, non-reactivity who, who sort of you know sort of s seemed to know what it was to be emotionally reactive uh, and 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 uh, the, you know this is not so so i'm just sort of set, i guess trying to suggest that you know dharma is not just found in one philosophy or, or one sort of particular um you know worldview but it said that there seems to be elements of it that are inherent within 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 humans, yeah. uh, and it's obviously expressed in a different way. But I'll go back to Java. Uh, my ex father in law, ex because he's now died, but also because uh, my wife divorced me. So my ex father in law, really nice man, um, is he was a associated with a group called Sumara, uh, which was sort of a, um, uh, a type of group that was pretty much frowned on by, by, by most in, in, in Indonesian society because it wasn't sort of explicitly uh, religious, in particular Islamic. And so you know, these people were sort of, even though they, they, you know, they were ostensibly Muslims, as, as far as identity card was concerned, um, they actually practiced something which was very, very similar to what to what you know. You would recognize if you if you saw Samara in action, you would say, "Oh, that looks like Dharma. That looks like a little bit like Buddhism, even." Um, which is, and it most definitely isn't. It, it's come from a completely different place. Uh, it sort of emerged, uh, you know, it's sort of been brought together over centuries. Uh, it's it's a very, very small group now. I think they're almost extinct. Uh, because of you know pressures from Islamists and, and others, it's rather dangerous to be anything apart from a Muslim here. Uh, so yeah, there's a, a lot, a lot of pressure for people not to uh, engage in these things. But but all Samara was it, it wasn't a belief system. It was mostly just a sitting. Just just a what? Just sitting, yeah. being. Yeah. So so they, they would have these you know. You, I'm not, they didn't even really refer to it as meditation, even though it was quite clearly meditation. There was no doubt of, of my point of view that it was meditation. Um, and, and yeah, just that, that the whole sort of feel to it, you know, and, and, and the, the emphasis on, on uh, they, expressed, they expressed it differently, but it was essentially uh, emotional non-reactivity. And, and, uh, and, and uh, accepting the world for what it was uh, in, in terms of the, the now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, that, I, I guess that sort of led me to sort of say, well, you know, Dharma is not unique to Buddhism or to the Buddha, uh, you know, which I think most of us intellectually already know, uh, but it, it can be found in a lot of places if you're, if you're looking for it. <laughs> And I've been looking for it, obviously. So, so yes, yeah, so I guess that's what sort of you know brought me to a to a place where I sort of say, you know, we we cannot, we might be able to define Dharma, and, and I think it's 
pretty simple. But probably what's more important is to find our own dharma, our own sort of way. Um, so I guess that's what I'm trying to get from people. What is, what is your way? You know, how did you get here? Uh, what, what frameworks did you, did you use to arrive at this point? Because I, I arrived at this point and I, and I come from a different, completely different direction. Yeah. And, 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 and the same can be said for, for you know, any number of different people. You know, they, they, they came from, from, from completely different places and yet sort of somehow arrived at this place, which we call Dharma. Those are, I think those are, that's, a, that's a great question. I, for some reason, when you're talking about that, one of the things that happened after being in Stephen's group was I, um, I started a little teeny tiny sangha here with like two, sometimes three people where we meet to meditate outside, no matter what the weather, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. once a week. And um, sometimes we're under a, an overhang at the, the person's house that we meet at. And I, I think that's a great question because I, part of me wants to say, I, I, wanna, I wanna ask the people that meet with me about why do they come? You know, what, mm -hmm. what is it? And, why, and so then to just ask myself that, you know, how did I get here? Honestly, I think I got here through my profession because in psychology, I, I became very, um, what's the word, kind of disheartened with what it means to analyze everything. Mm -hmm. and I didn't really see that people changed all that much. Mm. And I, um, I taught a lot. So I taught and I, and I had a private practice. And um, I, I actually think, um, you know, that studying principles of Buddhism, well, the thing that brought me to even studying Buddhism was the idea that everybody suffers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I think I've come home. <laughs> because in psychology, we all know everybody suffers, but nobody really says that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the focus is on how to make them better, mm. not how to be with what is. Yes, yes. Um, and so my, yeah, so that, that's kind of how I came to, and maybe, maybe that also just involves <coughs> my, my dharma as well, you know, my... Well, do, do you think there's some way that, yeah, this is... No, a difficult question. Even I have difficulty answering it. But, but uh, can, can you think of just those elements that you think of as being part of your way, your, your dharma, the way that you um, are in the world? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think I can. Like what, what comes to mind is sometimes I measure my actions by way of what's going to help me sleep better at night. <laughs> yeah, that sounds you know? good. So, so if somebody gives me the wrong change at the store and they've given me $20 more than what they should have, mm -hmm. often what triggers in my head is, yeah, you're not going to feel good walking out of the store with that. Uh -huh. So I give it yeah. back. Yes. So they're kind, I, I kind of have some, I don't know what they are, principles or ideas like that, mm. that I, I carry with me into different situations and inter interactions. I had a, mm. a, a, a wonderful friend. He was actually a great teacher for me. He used to say, maybe this is Dharma, I don't know. He used to say, the steps of getting there are the qualities of being there. So how, however you got to where you are, you bring with you all the qualities that got you there. Yeah, of course, yes, that's, that's obvious, isn't it? Yeah. But I, but I actually think it's quite organic. I think it also mm. keeps changing. Yes, well, of course, because we're continually evolving with this continual yeah. movement. Yes, <laughs> right. yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's interesting. I don't know if that answers your question, but I am aware that I have certain ideas in my head that allow me to live a saner life. And, and mm. interestingly enough, some of those ideas didn't come from Buddhism at all. They came from being an Al-Anon for some years. A bit, really? Yeah. Yeah, so things it's, like, um, they, they, they can overlap with principles of Buddhism, but you know, things like, um, I'm not going to get into a fight over that thing because it creates a lot of drama and it, and it can make me too anxious. So I choose not to. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's a great example of that, but, um, you know, some of the ideas in Al-Anon are things like staying on your side of the street, you know, or one what does of the that mean? Things, huh? What does that mean? Uh, what that means is, is that not jumping over into somebody else's business if you haven't been asked. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of people in Al-Anon end up there because they want to be helpers and they're just um, trying to do the nice thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just, they're just trying to be, help I just want to help you, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so often not the thing to do. Mm. Well, because, because this is, it, it, uh, people might be struggling with something that is just so personal and, and, you know, organically them that yeah. really no one else can can help. Is that yeah. what you're suggesting? I mean, unless, of course, they ask, if they ask, you know, or yeah. I can ask and say, would you like my help with this? As opposed to just jumping in and saying, here's how you can fix that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so some of those ideas allow me to live a saner life. Yeah. So, so how central would you say that, you know, I'll call it Dharma, how, how, would you, how central would you feel that you know, Dharma was to, to, to your life? To my life? Yeah. I think it is my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the same way. Um, yeah. I was sort of interested to sort of know that um, other people have that same... I mean, obviously, you know, speaking to someone who's clearly got an interest in secular dharma by doing a secular dharma course and all that sort of thing. You know, you know, obviously, my, my sample size or my sample is biased, but but uh, I, I have found that you know that uh, it, it's just not a it's it's a, it's a way of being, and that uh, you know even even amongst uh, the more religious amongst us. I mean, yeah. you can still you can still see Dharma, no matter you know how much you might disagree or or you know, shake your head about some things that some people believe. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. what they're expressing is a Dharma, and and that and that Dharma you know, em, you know emphasizes you know awareness, compassion, connection, uh, the, the, those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, but yeah, I've, I've, I've seen, seen that with a, a number of people. It, it does, does seem to be rather central. Because um, um, I mean, people do sometimes take these courses out just out of interest, and it's really not sort of something which is really embedded in them, or perhaps not really deeply embedded in them. Uh, but, but, you know, it, for me at least, it just seems to be, you know, well, I, I won't say everything. But you know, in, in terms of the way I respond to the world, it, it, it really is that there really is nothing else that really matters. You know? yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's interesting to know. It's almost, it's almost to me, their inner, my life and Dharma are, it's like, it's like they're woven together. Mm -hmm. So I, can't, yes. I feel like I can't, they're not separate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What about this? This uh, you're probably 
in, in the best position to, to talk about this. I mean, um, my group has been discussing um, you know, aspects of the way that Dharma is taught, uh, in particular in, in, in the context of you know, course, courses, for example. Um, and, and just feeling that uh, um, the, there's an overemphasis on people's inward or, or, or inner world and, and sort of neglecting to sort of uh, uh, take yeah. us out of that inner world into a, a discourse with, with the outer world. Uh, I've, I've got this thought uh, and, and it's only my thought that you know there really is no self. What what there is is connections with the world. Uh, that, that that is our that is what self is is our connections. Uh, if there is no connection, there is no self. Uh, it, it is impossible to be an individual, uh, in, in my view. Uh, without connection, there is no person. You know? um, I, 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 I don't know. You, you don't have to agree with this, by the way. <laughs> it's just sort of some something that I think. Uh, but just for example, uh, if, if if a baby was born and somehow through some miracle was able to sort of reach maturity uh, without any contact whatsoever since the moment of birth, uh, would that be a person with no memory of, of any sort of connection at all? That would not be a person. That would be well, just. That, uh, that would be our president. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. I'll give you that. But, <laughs> but, but. But normally speaking, it would just be well. What would what what it would just be some sort of animal with with meat on and skeleton and stuff. It would not be a person. Without yeah. connection, there is no person. Uh, so until there is connection, you know. But, uh, Speaking of yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, he wants to go out. He wants to go out. <laughs> so cute. Oh, they all. How old is he? That one is um, uh, three. I think. Hard to keep track. They keep changing these, their ages every every year. <laughs> every year. <laughs> no, no, it's had a, they expect me to sort of memorize it, but they keep changing. So, well, you know, I, I, I want you know, there's that story about a kid, a baby that was raised by wolves. Yes, yes. It's th those sorts of stories that I'm interested in, but even with the with the ones raised by wolves, there is still the connection with the wolf. Yeah. yeah. They have a connection. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, so even those stories are sort of, you know, yeah, that, that's a really, I mean, I mean, obviously it, it would be impossible to sort of, you know, for, for, for a baby to be born immediately separated from, from all humanity and, and be able to sort of raise itself, obviously it would die, uh, but, you know, given some, you know, hypothetical and, and that, you know, it was in fact possible for that, for that, uh, for that baby to grow. Um, there, there, without, actually, there was an experiment. Do you know about that? About and it had to do with uh, the ability to thrive, where mm -hmm. where in, infants were not touched. Oh, ah, um, yeah. You know, they well, were that's very very similar, very very similar. Yeah. But, but even even with that, there is still people. There is still a connection with the people who are ignoring them, for example. Or not paying them attention. Yeah, There's still yeah. awareness that there are people who are not connected with them. Yeah. So, so you know, that that sort of that that would produce some sort of sense of self. Yeah. Because of that, you know, non-connection or, or awareness of non-connection. Whereas if you had no awareness of non-connection, you would, yeah, like I said, it'd be just a, a hunk of meat with, with bones. Uh, there, there would be nothing there to sort of say I am a person, I am connected. Yeah. So you know, I guess that, that's where my, my bias at the moment my, in terms of my thinking is, is that you know, without connection there is no self. What makes the self is, is connections with the world. 
and in particular with other other humans, of course, but but, but with the world in general. Yeah. But I could be wrong. No, I I think I actually I think that's right, and I think that's why. Um, I think that kind of feeds into why I started to get skeptical about psychotherapy because it's you in a room with one other person yeah. and there's, there's nothing about community. Exactly. And I actually think psychotherapy, the way it has had gone and has gone is part of why we are where we are now as a culture. Mm. Yeah. Disconnected and individualistic. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's not a recipe for, for, for a good life. <laughs> I, I guess this is... Well, the, the idea of, for instance, treating depression by way of doing something for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I never recall hearing that when I was learning psychology or studying mm -hmm. it, that that was a way to deal with depression. It was always about what you needed to do for yourself. Mm. Well, 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 putting aside sort of, you know, obviously you know, some people have you know, more on organic type of depression than others. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have thought that the, the number one cure for depression was connection. Uh, yeah. Where people have connections that they're, they're not often depressed. You know? That's right. Putting aside sort of you know uh, disease states, um, so so to sort of have you know psychotherapy in this one-on-one -on -one sort of thing. I mean, obviously it has its has it has its place, but but ultimately the, the the objective is connection, not with not with the psychotherapist, but with, but with the world. That's you know, right. How, how do we how do we get this person reconnected? Uh, because you know the the, the source of I would speculate. You, you may know better, but the, the source of most uh, depression is is, is uh, either connections or, or a lack of them. Right. Um, and uh, how how do I reestablish connection? And obviously, sometimes it's not easy. You know, sometimes it's hard to do, or sometimes you know, it, it's just hard. Um, but ultimately, that that <laughs> that is where cures for for. Well, depression, I think, lie. It's in you know, how do we reconnect this person? How do we re-engage this person with, yeah. with, with the outer world, with other people, in some way? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're signed have up. To... What? I'm going to have to. Signed... Yeah, you, but you have signed up for the, for the for the course for the new course or not? I signed up for uh, his two-day imagination and faith. Okay. okay. But I didn't sign up for the other one. Yeah. I, I struggle. I, I, to be honest, I struggle a bit with Stephen because um, I'm a little tired of, I'm not speaking to you, but I'm a little tired of white-haired white men being the main focus. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I completely understand. Uh, a little I, bit I, hard I, to say. And I'm not saying all men are like that. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that. But even Stephen, I mean, we've been having a conversation in our group kind of about it, which is um, even when Stephen brought in women, they were subordinates. You know, mm -hmm. they, they weren't yeah. his equal. Well, it, it, does he have an equal? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. And well, I'm not, you know, I don't think he's looking for one, which is fine. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. And so with him, I take what I like and I leave the rest. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well okay, I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, thanks very much for, for talking to me. And, yeah, uh, no, lovely. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for the invitation. I'll, I'll be sort of re-watching this to sort of miss all the things that I've didn't catch. <laughs> so I might, might be back with, with uh, something. Uh, if, you, if you come up with something that you don't understand what I said, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, have a good time there. It's, it's a great day for America. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay, see you then. Be safe.
You too.